I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What a whirlwind of a week. Or should I say, past few weeks, or months, or screw it, what a whirlwind of a year we have been through. For some, this week's inauguration brought much hope and excitement. For others, it brought fear and mistrust. That seems to happen any time that the White House and the Congress here in America change political hands. After the events at the Capitol two and a half weeks ago, I hope that we're all grateful that this week's transfer of power was relatively peaceful and that we did not see the violence that so many feared, a threat that warranted a seven-foot-tall, non-scalable fence emphasized with barbed wire across the top. I feel like collectively as a nation, we have all needed to catch our breath. Whether we have found ourselves holding our breath for a dangerously long period of time, or because we have been ripping and running so hard that we simply need to slow down to catch it, or perhaps because we have been talking, fighting, or yelling for so long that we haven't found enough silence within ourselves to inhale. For these and additional reasons, we have needed to stop, to breathe, filling our lungs with rich, fresh air and slowly releasing it. One of the most surprising ways I found myself catching my breath this week was through the absolute joy of following the Bernie Sanders memes that came out of the inauguration. Now, I'm sure most of you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, Brendan Similowski, he's a photojournalist, he was at the inauguration, and he captured a photo of Senator, Senator Bernie Sanders outside the Capitol, seated socially distanced in a chair by himself, wearing a mask, wrapped in a very plain, practical winter coat, and fabulously looking homemade mittens, truly warranted of a Vermont resident. Senator Sanders looked like a perfect curmudgeon, trying to stay warm. This picture has gone viral, with Senator Sanders being photoshopped into iconic photos, movie scenes, classic art, even on the moon. These stupid memes have brought so much joy to my house over the past few days. This laughter has felt like a breath of fresh air that I did not realize how much I needed. And the more that I went down the rabbit hole of these Bernie memes, and the more that I studied our scripture passages assigned for today, I realized that this picture of Bernie embraces the spirit of our beloved prophet Jonah very well, who was just as much of a curmudgeon as Bernie looks in this photo. The chapter that we heard read this morning from Jonah is smack dab in the middle of the book. And this is a very short book. It takes an average reader less than 10 minutes to read the whole thing. And as Dominic pointed out to me earlier this week, if you're not paying attention while reading, you could easily think that this chapter is the very first chapter of the book of Jonah. Now, the first chapter begins, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amitti, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And what we heard this morning was, The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, 
and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. Now, if you didn't catch the difference, it is slight. The Lord came to Jonah a second time. You see, the first time the Lord spoke to Jonah, calling him to go cry out to the city of Nineveh, Jonah essentially said, hell no, and took off running in the other direction. As a Jew, the people of Nineveh were essentially Jonah's people's enemies. He was not interested in visiting that city nor helping them to be saved, repent, and spared from the wrath of God. Scripture says that Jonah was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord. So he booked a very expensive passage on a boat headed across the Mediterranean Sea. And while on this boat is caught in a dangerous storm, and while all others on the ship are frantically trying to keep the ship safe, praying to their gods for safety, Jonah is in the deepest part of the ship, sleeping. Scripture could be interpreted that Jonah was not only just in a deep sleep, but that he had willed himself to sleep. I can almost picture him like a child who is so worked up and frightened that she crouches in a protective stance, throws a blanket over her head, willing whatever is scaring her to disappear and eventually falls asleep in that position. The story continues with the captain locating the self-isolated Jonah asleep, the crew figuring out that it must be because of Jonah that the storm was not letting up, and ultimately Jonah volunteering himself to be tossed off the side of the ship to save the lives of everyone. And three days later, he finds himself back where he started, smelling kind of fishy, and God calling him once again to the great city of Nineveh. This time, Jonah takes a deep breath and he goes. Through Jonah, in this time and space of Nineveh, the entire city, including its king, hears the word of God, repents, and through that, God extends mercy, sparing them from calamity. What we know of the end of the story of Jonah is that Jonah ends much like Bernie, sitting curmudgeonly under a shriveled bush, frustrated because just as Jonah suspected, God was gracious, merciful and slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love for all, even for Jonah's enemies. In a lot of ways, I feel like this past year, for so many of us, has felt like we too are trying to will ourselves to sleep in the depths of our own ships, hoping that we won't wake up until the things that are frightening us, scaring us, or quite, quite frankly, wearing us down are gone. Or perhaps we have recent, fe perhaps we feel like we have recently been spewed onto dry land after days or maybe months in the belly of Sheol. Or, as our youth poet laureate Amanda Gorman said in her inauguration poem this week, we've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and that norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. Whether you have woken from a deep sleep, or are slowly picking yourself up from the damp sand of dry land, or you have braved the belly of the beast. We are all deserving of a deep breath of fresh air. I'm not sure if you can feel it, 
but I feel a newness in the air. Now, perhaps it is the excitement of starting my ninth month of pregnancy, but we're also together standing at the start of a new year, both calendrically and liturgically. We have a new administration as a nation. We're slated to have a new bishop here in the Diocese of Chicago in a few months. And we have the hope of the COVID-19 vaccine rollouts that are happening. With this newness comes a renewed opportunity for each of us to listen for God's call in our lives, just like Jonah and just like the disciples. Jesus called his disciples, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, and we too are called into that life in this continued ministry of Jesus. For each of us, this call is as unique as we are, but that call is there for each and every one of us. For us to live into this newness of our current time and our current nation, but also this ongoing newness of what God is doing in the world through Jesus Christ. We must be willing to say yes to this call and do our absolute best to live our lives in this world, rooted in the steadfast love that God showed the people of Nineveh and that Jesus made incarnate in this world. If the story of Jonah teaches us anything, it is that we can choose to run from this call. We can turn in the other direction, but we cannot flee from the presence of the Lord, ever. So as we all continue to take our deep breaths at the start of this week, with last week and this last year in our collective past, rather than simply embracing the laughter that a Bernie meme may provide us, let us breathe in with hope that our wise youth po poet laureate Amanda Gorman left us with on Wednesday afternoon. She said, when day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Amen.